strange to some people, but it simply means that it's going to be an easy year for each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Whatever it is that we've been trusting in God for, God will accomplish it for us this year in Jesus' name. Amen.
joy of the Lord shall come into our lives. He shall make us happy. He shall give us hope. He shall give us peace. We fight in God. Hallelujah. Come and sing. Oh, my God. travel into this year all alone because the hand of God is upon you and the presence of God will escort you. If you believe this prayer, say a good amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the choir. I want to appreciate you for that good singing. On a lighter note, Brother Ayo, you have permission to go to every house in this place. And please, when you see him in your house, he is not a stranger. Amen. Amen. He has announced that he's going to be coming to your house. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So everybody always be ready because with I will be visiting you. Amen. 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 You're welcome. God bless you. Please help me tell your neighbor it's a brand new year. Brand new year. Maybe they forgot. I just want you to remind them it's a brand new year. Brand new year. Amen. It's a brand new year. And I'm glad you are in this year. I'm glad you made it to this year. 
Amen. 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 May it be a very good year for all of us. Amen. And may God's name be glorified over our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take a brief meditation on the word of God before we close for this morning. Uh, let me remind us also that there will, be not, there will not be home fellowship tonight. Uh, when we leave here, we will go home and... Uh, I know what, we know what we are doing. God is helping us to help you so that you can prepare very well because tomorrow we are beginning a journey. Hallelujah. We are beginning a journey tomorrow, so we want to give you as much uh, space so you can prepare very well for tomorrow's journey that begins. The flight is taking off tomorrow morning and it's going to fly for 21 days, nonstop, and it's not going to crash on the road. There is no mountain that will bring that flight down. Amen. And the fuel will never finish. Amen. Can I have an amen? amen? No engine failure. Amen. That flight will fly to higher heights. Amen. And by the time we land in 21 days, you will never be the same person. Amen. Your life will have been transformed. Amen. Your whole destiny for year 2017 will have been set and great things will begin to pour into your life. That's why you need to prepare and prepare very well. Amen. 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 Let's read the scriptures in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Holy Spirit, help me. Genesis chapter 1, reading from verse 1 to 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. That it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Amen. Amen. Verse 5. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Today we like to share on uh, or point our thoughts to the subject the first day. Today is the first day of the first week of the first month of the new year. It's no coincidence. God is a God of plan. It's like a brand new beginning. Indeed, it is a brand new beginning. And God wants us to think about the first day. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for this time. We bless your holy name because every time you bring us together, you have always had a word to live with us for the edification of our lives, for the formation of our destiny, and for to draw us closer to you so that our walk with you is right. Oh God, our Father, another year is set before us, and today is the very first day. It is also the first day of the week and the first day of the month, the first day of the year. Oh God, our Father, we pray today that, Lord, you will help us to align our hearts with you and the very thing that you did on the first day. Grant, O oh God, that today we will join you in creating the same that you created on that first day. And that, God, that which we create today in our hearts and in our lives will follow us the rest of the year and have a total influence over all that we do the rest of this year. Father, we thank you because we know you will do it. Take all the glory as I bring these brief meditations in the hearts of your people. I ask, O oh God, that you will use me as an oracle to bring your word. And I ask, O oh God, that our hearts will be pointed in the direction of which you want them to go. And help us, O oh God, that at the end of the day, O oh God, both myself and my brethren will be blessed. And we shall live here with a definite word that God has left us with and that will bless our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Scripture tells us that the very first day when God set out to create all that you know exists today, everything that you see in creation, everything that you know in the universe and in the world, they all began one particular day. And that very first day is what we are looking at. Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth. I like that introduction. It's just simply saying that everything that you see and know about, they never just fell. They never just happened. There is an author for all of them. There is one who orchestrated them. There is an architect for all of them. There is a grand design that they, that they align with. There is one who formed all of, thing, all of the things that you know about. They didn't just happen. If they are not an accident at all. And nothing is in this creation, both in heaven and on earth, that is an accident as far as God is concerned. Because he created all of them. It was a deliberate thing. It was not an afterthought. It was not a coincidence. It didn't just take place. He sat to plan to think them through and then brought to pass everything he did. The Bible says, <clears throat> the Bible tells us, in that scripture, that God, <clears throat> amen, the Bible tells us that God formed all of these things. But in beginning all of the things that he put together, our subject of concern is taken in the very first uh, five verses. The Bible says that prior to that, there was confusion, there was chaos, there was darkness. None of these things represents God. None of these things is akin to the person of God. These prevailed over the, the, the entire universe before then. Before God, when God looked, it said, let there be light. All right? Today we are looking at what God did on the first day, and that is that he created light. He created light to take care of the darkness that prevailed around that, I mean, in the entire universe at that period. He said, let there be light. And immediately he said, let there be light, light came. Light is a substitute, as far as God's plan is concerned, for darkness. Light is a substitute for darkness. Light brightens the place. Light makes visibility easy and possible. Light makes plants to grow. Those of us who did a little science, we know very well that, that there is what they call photosynthesis. It is that which helps plants to grow. And it is what? The incursion of light. Light helps plants to grow. And so God intended that light will take away every form of darkness. And God himself, when he said, let there be light. I like to say here that when I read that scripture that says God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. It means when God said, let there be light, God superimposed himself over all that was prevailing at that time. And let me say here that once God comes into a thing, he takes over. Hallelujah. When God comes into an environment, he takes over. Whatever was happening in that environment before, he sets it aside and then brings a new template. He causes everything to work in accordance with his personality. Whatever was not happening according to plan at that time and according to his personality, they immediately aligned because God has taken over. So when God said, let there be light, God was bringing himself into all that was, that was around at that time. He said, let there be light, and immediately there was light. The light dispelled the darkness. 
The darkness disappeared. The darkness ran away. The darkness could not stand anymore because the owner of the heavens and the earth has come in and has taken over. None can oppose him. None can say no to him. Everything must say yes to him because he is king of all kings. He is mighty authority, final judge. Nobody can resist him. Nature couldn't resist him because nature had no existence except he brought it into being. Nothing ever was except through him. Therefore, when he said, let there be light, it was like he came in to be, into all things and took over. And therefore suspended whatever else was going on. And that time, he, be, he took the rule over everything. And there was light. Light took over the darkness. When the light came, the chaos ceased. When the light came, the darkness disappeared. When the light came, the confusion disappeared. And I want to say here, every time light appears up till today, that principle has not been broken. The slightest light dispels the thickest darkness. The slightest light dispels, expels, sends away the thickest darkness. All you need in a very dark environment is to bring the glow warm. Those of you who ever lived in the village, you know the glow warm. I don't know whether they still exist in this our cosmopolitan environment, but a glow warm carries a tiny light around its abdomen. And in the thickness of the night, if you don't see any other thing, you will see the glow warm. If you don't see the lizard, you will see the glow warm. You may not see the world gecko in a thick darkness, you will see the glow warm. You may not see even as huge as an elephant, but I tell in the thickness of darkness. But when the glow warm appears, you will see it from afar. Why? Because of what it bears. The moment it comes in, it dispels the thickness of the night. Hear me. When the darkness is very thick, that's when the glow warm is more visible. Hallelujah. It just tells me that darkness is never a threat to light. Instead, it is the other way around. That light is what? It's a threat to darkness and never fears darkness. All it just needs is a tiny, the slightest light will dispel the thickest darkness. Amen. So the glow worm just keeps going and everybody could identify there's a glow worm going out there because of what it carries. It carries light. That means that if a man carries the light, he cannot be hid. Scripture says you are the light of the world. You are a city that is set upon a hill. And because of that, you cannot be hid. Why are you the light of God? Let me say here, every child of God, every man who is a Christian, everybody who has Jesus in their heart, they have become Jesus themselves. Why Jesus, when he came into the earth, exactly what the Father did, the Father in the midst of darkness said, let there be light. In other words, the Father took over here announced himself and when Jesus the son who is the same as the father came into this world in the midst of a dark world what did Jesus do Jesus announced himself he said as long as I am in this world I am the light of the world and so whoever has me automatically has the light and not just a light he has the light of God. And because of that, they become a light to the entire world. So wherever they enter, like the glow worm, they can't be hid. They may be small. Little Simi, who has just shared a testimony, she is a young baby girl. She may not be more than 14 years if she's up to 14. Then, But I want to say here, little girl as she is, having known Jesus, she carries his light. Everywhere she enters, she can enter towards in the midst of darkness as small as that little is when she enters a place she becomes a threat to darkness because like the glow warm 
She may be small, but her light is never small. Can I have an amen? amen. God said, let there be light. On the very first day, he said, let there be light. When he came, when the light came, darkness disappeared. I came to announce to you today, on this first day, I receive, I release upon you light throughout this year. You receive light throughout this year. I say receive light throughout this year. I told you that light makes visibility possible and easy. I want to say here, where there is confusion and people can't see their way, they can't tell where they are going, where they are standing on crossroads and neither knowing whether to go left or to right. To, let me say here, you are the only person they will be needing at a time like that because when you come, the darkness will disappear, confusion will give way and you will say, this is the way to go. And when you say to them, this is the way to go and they follow you into to that way they are going to follow into prosperity, into success, into ability, into strength, into blessing, into, you know, into all good things, into success in whatever they do. Why? You carry the light. Praise God. If there is anything I would like to live in your heart this year and this very first day is that none of you should identify with darkness. Why? God, your father, hated darkness from the beginning. So he said, let there be light. And when light came, darkness ran away. Every darkness still hiding in some corner of your life. I came here to command that darkness to disappear. In the name of Jesus. I command every dark activity to fizzle away. I command every dark presence to wither in your life, to let go the light of God in your life. Let it permeate you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, both in the inside and in the outside, everywhere you go. I say you are light because you carry the light of God. God said, let there be light. And there was light and Jesus came announcing he said i am the light of the world and i like him when he said as the father has sent me so send i you how did the father send him the father sent him as the light and he said so i send you if he sent him as the light and he sent us also in the same way then he is also sending us as what as the light therefore go into that environment and brighten it up. When people are moody, you will become the brightness of their faces. You will become the hope of their hearts. When they hear your testimony, they will brighten up. Life will come back to them. Strength will come back. Energy will return. Then hope will come alive. And they will march on with greater confidence. And that defeat that they suffered before then will give way. So that they can move on in exuberance. Because the light has come. Amen. The second thing I said light does is that he sends away confusion. I want to say here today that every little confusion lingering anywhere in your life, today on this first day, light takes over and that confusion must leave you. Confusion as to whom to marry, it must leave you. Confusion as to a particular job decision, it must leave you. Confusion as to where to go, I say it's leaving you. Confusion as to which job to take, which one not to take, whether to take this new one or to remain in the job where you have been, that confusion is leaving you this first day. Can I have an amen in the house? Amen. amen. And I said that when light comes, light causes even plants to grow. You will become a catalyst of growth. Amen. I release you today on this first day as catalyst of growth. Amen. I say you have become an instrument of growth. When you appear, everything that died before, they will jump back to life and they begin to grow. They have been stunted for some time. They will begin again to grow. They have stagnated for too long. You are the reason for their growth in the mighty name of Jesus. They will grow in strength. They will grow in grace. They will grow in energy. They will grow in wisdom. They will grow in knowledge. They will grow in every dimension because of you in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ came and said, as long as I'm in this world, I am the light of the world. Jesus Christ is God, and God announced light at the very beginning of the way. Light is synonymous to God. Light is synonymous to God. He is light. 
In him, like I said, there is no darkness whatsoever. And therefore, what is the call of God to do uh, to us today? Please, I want to ask that everyone, all of you here who are seated in this first service, please walk in the light. Because you cannot say you are light and then walk in darkness. That's a contradiction. All through, the, through this year, I want you to create light in your heart. God is asking you, he created light first day. I want you also, according to the word of God, that you should do what? On the first day, you should create light. What I'm saying is that you should begin to live a light mentality throughout this year. Let light be created in your head. Let light be created in your heart. Let light be created in your mind. Let light be created throughout your whole life. Today, I mean, today, for the rest of the year. In other words, because you have become light-oriented, you will not want to identify with anything that is darkness. And if you see the works of darkness anywhere, you can't be part of, tho of, of those because light and darkness do not work together. On the first day, create light in your heart and let that light take over your business. When, Jesus, when God said, let there be light, light came and it overshadowed everything. I want you to ensure that you allow light to shine through your business. Don't be saying you are light, but you are involved in dark, shady activities in your business life. If your light doesn't touch that side, then you are not light. I heard somebody say, Pastor, this is not matter of church. This is business. When we go to church, we do church. When we come to business, we deal with it businessly. I want you to know that you are light everywhere. In the office, your light must shine. In, the, in, your, in your job, your light must shine. In your family, your light must shine. In your personal relationship with people throughout this year, it must be guided by light. In your doings throughout this year, they just must be guided by light. You must be able to say to yourself, I am light, I live in light, and I can do no other. Actually, light is my nature. Not to be light is completely contrary to my personality. I don't even know how not to be light. Let that be in your mind and let it carry you through the first, through the whole of this year that you are light. Everywhere you go, may you be light. When they are doing evil things that do not line up with, with light, I say may you never be involved in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to ask you never to be involved in any form of theft. It's the work of darkness. Don't be involved in any work of deceit. That is darkness. I like to thank God because as we rounded off the year, God asked us to do an introspection to check what we had, how we had lived, the quality of the life we lived in 2016. But at the very beginning, first day, he is now defining to us the kind of life we ought to live in year 2007. And he says, first thing I did was to establish light. And I'm asking that on the first day, you too must establish light in your heart. And everywhere you go, whatever is contrary to the light of God, that God will not support, let not your hand be involved in it, no matter what it will bring, no matter how much pleasure it can give, and no matter what it promises, let it never, never be your portion because you are of the light and not of darkness. Praise God. Let's read a scripture. Galatians chapter, let's look at Galatians chapter 5. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Can we look at Galatians chapter 5 verse 16? Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. If you find it, you, I, I will read. It's already on the, on, the, on the screen. I say then who? God is saying do what? Walk in the spirit and you shall not gratify the lust of the flesh. Let's move on to 17. Move on to 17. The flesh lost against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another so that you do not do the things that you wish. Let's go to 19, 18. Move on, move on, move on. 
But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 19, let's go. The, now the works of the flesh are what? Are evident. The works of the flesh are the same as the works of darkness. The works of the flesh are the same as the works of darkness. And he said, walk in the spirit so that you do not walk in the works of the flesh. That you do not walk in the work, do the works of darkness. And he says, these are the things that darkness is characterized with. They are what? The works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness. All right, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, uh, selfish ambitions, dissensions or dissensions, heresies. All right, envies, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things do not or will not do what will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you are the light, you are already in God's own kingdom. The moment you step out and begin to live like is described here, you have walked out of the light and you are now living in darkness. And Bible says living that way can never give you access into the kingdom. And the kingdom is not just a geographical location. I'm not talking about heaven. You do not have access to the inheritance of God and all that God stands for and does and gives because you have stepped out of him because he is light. The moment you step out of living like a man of light, you are living contrary to his person and the two of you cannot be agreed together. As we travel in the year, God is saying to us that you were crafted to live in the light. Little, little quarrels and envies should not be found amongst us. Impurities of all kinds should not be our lifestyle in the course of the new year that we have entered today because they are works of darkness. They are works of darkness that we must put behind us so that we can live to glorify God who is light and in whom there is no darkness at all. If a man is in the light, Oh, he cannot be involved with the works of darkness because the two do not work together. Check that list. And I want you to hold that scripture in your mind. And please beware, this scripture is God's word. He said, walk then in the light. Walk then in the spirit. Because the moment you allow your flesh to take over you, you will enter into living in darkness and practicing these things. And they are destructive. They lead to death. They lead to exemption from the kingdom of our God. As the year goes by, beginning from today, may light shine in my heart. May light shine in your heart. May light not only shine, but may light rule over my heart. And light rule over my family. Light rule over my heart. Light, light rule over my own life. Everywhere I go, may I live a consistent life of light. Consistent life of light. Let this be your portion in the name of Jesus. Please come out this year, 2017, be resolute that you will not be undulating back and forth today in the light and tomorrow in darkness. No, no, no. If a man be in the light, let him stand in the light, live in the light every day of his light throughout. God wants a consistent life in light throughout in every area of your light. Students must live the life of light. Let there be light in your conduct your father can't pursue you everywhere. Your mother can't follow you everywhere. Your, your parents, you know, unfortunately, today we live in, in, a, in a time when technology has, you know, is just everywhere. It's what is ruling the world. Your parents can actually be there with you, life, physically. They are together with you in a house. And yet, you, in, your, in your phone, you are not with them. In the phone, right in your hand, they can't be looking at what are you doing because these days you are talking with children, they are not there. 
They are more busy with those things in their hands than they can gist with you. The days of gisting in family, those days are over. You have to be deliberate to say, please, put this thing away before you can gist with your children anymore. Because it's like they don't have anything again to gist with their parents. All that they want to gist is in that phone. And so right there at that same place, in, the fa in your very face as a parent, the child can be involved in dark activities on phone. Meanwhile, he's sitting in a family and in a home where it is said to be a family of light. Right there, the child is involved in dark activities. Dark activities. Now, but I want to say here that your parents, therefore, that there's a limitation. There's a limit to which they can go in trying to, you know, order you, dictate this, that, that. There's a limit they can go. But Allah will say here that there is a greater parent in you. If you are a child of God, the spirit of God resides in you. Therefore, you must say to yourself, I am crafted in the light. I am crafted for light. I am light myself. Therefore, whatever this phone will offer, if it does not agree with the person that I am, I have no business with it. It must be a personal resolve. It was a personal resolve when that young man said, I will arise and go back to my father. Even if he's not going to take me in, let it be that I have confessed to him. Let them leave me outside as a servant or as a slave. I'm better out there than to be out here in this darkness. The choice to go and live in the light is a personal choice. And everyone must make that choice because we are going to be confronted with issues and things of us in our time, in this generation, in this time, in this year, with the recession we are in, there's going to be, we are going to be confronted with, quote and unquote, opportunities. But they are not opportunities crafted in the light. They are opportunities crafted in darkness to ensnare you, enslave you, and put you in bondage forever. And they may look very beautiful. They may look very attractive. But you must always say to yourself, I am the light of the world. I'm a city that is set upon a hill. I cannot be hid. The works of darkness are not my portion because I am a child of light. And therefore, if darkness is bringing you certain opportunities, hear me, they are not opportunities. They are serpents. You must run away from all of them because they are meant to ruin your life. Church, Create light in your heart and let darkness disappear. Create light in your heart. See, you don't need to start fighting the darkness. You don't need to... I don't know how to best help you understand. Listen, I would like to ask you to spend more time working on creating and allowing light to take its place than to spend more time contending with the works of the devil. Because by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So if you make an effort to try to fight against the works of the flesh and the works of darkness, you will fail midway. But if you allow God to take over, if you allow his light to shine in your heart and influence your heart, it is automatic when light enters, darkness goes. Let the light of God shine in your heart. I heard Isaiah announcing in 60 verse 1, he says, Arise and do what? Shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Somebody say, oh Lord. oh Lord. I want to hear you loud and clear. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. I will not waste your glory. Waste that is risen upon me. Let me hear you say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. I will not waste your glory. <laughs> that is risen upon me. Let me hear it a third time. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. I will not waste your glory. That is risen upon me. Hear me. If you don't arise and shine the light, then you have wasted the glory of God.
of God. He said, arise and shine, for your light has come. He's not saying the light is coming. It has already come. Because when Jesus appeared, he said, what? I am the light of the world. And having appeared in your heart, he has lightened up your heart. And what he requires of you is to do what? Go out and shine it. He said, if you don't shine it, you are not allowing God's glory that is risen upon you to be made manifest. Don't waste God's glory. He put the glory on you and put the glory on me and put the glory on her that we may do what? We may shine it forth. Glory is not darkness. Glory is light. Please shine it in your workplace. Shine it with everybody you relate with. And if there is anywhere where you know that you, are ha you may have a tendency to be wrongly influenced and your light quenches or goes out. I want to ask you that you don't stay there and say I'm believing God. Bible says I should tell you, flee from all appearances of what? Of evil. He didn't say pray about it. Hello? I say, did he say pray about it? But he said you should do what? Flee. What is another word for flee? Run. What is another word for it? Pick race. Amen. 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 So this year, our journey is a journey of what? Come on, talk to me. It's a journey of what? Our journey is a journey of what? Anything that is contrary to the light of God, that's not your portion. Don't think about it. Don't pray about it. You should do, a, do what about it? Run. Run first. When you get to the place of safety, when you pick race, thank you, mama. When you pick race and get to the place of safety, huh? then rather than pray, that time you'll be thanking God. Your prayer will not be, Father, in the name of Jesus, I resist. You'll be saying, Father, thank you for delivering me. I prefer prayer of thanksgiving than prayer of deliverance. Hello. Hello. I don't know about you, but I prefer what? Prayer of thanksgiving than prayer of deliverance. So, I want you to run. When you run to the place of safety, then you do what? Prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord help us. Amen. Bow your heads, let's pray together. Eternal Rock of Ages, we thank you for today. Thank you for bringing your word to us. It was not a coincidence that you first created light, because light is you. By so doing, you brought yourself to being in the entire universe. And when you came in, you took over was whatever was prevailing that was not of God. Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus, help us to go into this year as children of God. Help us to become the light of the world, the light of our environment, the light wherever we go. In the mighty name of Jesus. All the works of darkness, help us to run away from all of them. Give us victory over them. May we not be influenced by the works of darkness. May they not be, the, be a delight to us. May we not find pleasure in them in year 2017. God, may our Christian life never be business as usual. May it be a completely new turn. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Can somebody say, Lord, help me to live in your light. And show forth your light wherever I go. In the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer for yourself as we round off this message. Light, 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 light. Just pray, to your, pray, pray for yourself. Say, God, I receive your light. I'm not going to waste your glory. Uh -uh. God, your glory is risen upon me. I'm not going to waste it. 
I'm going to be a good custodian of your glory. It will shine forth out of me to influence as many as are out there who are groping in darkness. I shall be the vessel of light. And by me, O oh God, darkness will disappear. Grant me grace not to be involved in the works of darkness. Grant me grace not to be involved in the works of the flesh. God, I pray this year, grant me a, resol a resolve in my heart that I will walk in your light and show forth your light and live like a child of light. Let there be no darkness in my activities, in my private life, in my public life, in my political life, in my business life, in my work life. Father, as a student, let me never, 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 never come, uh, join myself with the people of darkness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Church, can we say a better amen? amen? Can we say a louder amen? amen? May the Lord bless you. Amen. May your journey in this year experience and enjoy divine light for direction and guidance Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Throughout this year you will not grow up in darkness. Amen. Confusion has been taken away. Amen. Direction has come Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like to announce, yesterday we should have announced this but somehow it just slipped. We, we were blessed yesterday on the very last day of the year with a bouncing baby girl to uh, Dr. Dr. Mrs. and her husband, uh, Oye Deji, right? Brother, where is Brother Shonowo? Is he in church? Right, Oye Deji, right? 